Before we proceed on our discussion, let me present to you our objectives. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to illustrate probability of union of two events, solve the probability of A union B, differentiate mutually and non-mutually exclusive events, solve problems involving mutually and non-mutually exclusive events. Let's get started. Given for example, we have an experiment of randomly choosing a card in a standard deck of cards. Notice that each cards are completely different from each other. In a deck of 52 cards, we can choose either a club, a diamond, a spade, or a heart. Using probability of simple event, the probability of getting a spade in a deck of cards is given by 13 over 52. Since we have 13 clubs, so the numerator is 13 and the denominator is 52 since we have 52 possible outcomes in a deck of cards. Or simply, 1 fourth. Since 13 divided by 13 is 1 and 52 divided by 13 is equal to 4. Notice that each symbol is equally distributed in a deck of cards. The number of possible outcomes of the clubs, which is 13, is the same as the number of possible outcomes of the diamonds, spades, and even hearts. So the probability of getting a diamond is also equal to 1 fourth. The probability of getting a spade is also 1 fourth. And of course, the probability of getting a heart is also equal to 1 fourth. If you add all the possibilities of each symbols, you get 4 over 4. Since 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 4, then copy the same denominator which is 4. 4 over 4 is equal to 1. In probability, 1 means certain, meaning the event will surely happen. Therefore, in randomly choosing a card in a standard deck of cards, the probability of getting a club, or diamond, or spade, or heart is equal to 100%. Again, when we use the conjunction OR in probability, that means addition. And we are referring to the union of two or more events. Just like in this example, we can say that the probability of getting a club union the probability of getting a diamond Union, the probability of getting a spade, union, the probability of getting a heart, is equal to 100%. How about if you want to find the probability of union of two events? The probability of union of two events can be classified either mutually exclusive events or non-mutually exclusive events. Two events is said to be mutually exclusive if events have no outcome in common, if two events cannot happen at the same time. This is also referred as disjoint events and can be illustrated using two circles without overlapping since event A is completely different from event B. In mutually exclusive events, the probability that either A or B occurs is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Let's have an example. What is the probability of getting a 4 or face card in a deck of cards? The two events are, event A is getting a 4 and event B is getting a face card. The possible outcomes of event A are, 4 of clubs, 4 of diamond, 4 of heart, and 4 of spade. However, the possible outcomes of event B are, the Jack, Queen, and King of Clubs, the Jack, Queen, and King of Hearts, the Jack, Queen, and King of Diamond, and the Jack, Queen, and King of Spade. We have 12 possible outcomes for event B. Notice that no possible outcomes is the same on both event A and event B. So we can say that this is mutually exclusive events. Moreover, we can illustrate it using 
two circles without overlapping. Now, to find the probability of getting a 4 or face card, we will find the probability of getting a 4 first. And that is 4 over 52. Since we have 4 possible outcomes and 52 total number of cards in a deck of cards. Then, we will solve the probability of getting a face card. And that is 12 over 52. Since we have 12 face cards out of 52 cards. Hence, to solve the probability of getting a 4 or face card, we will add the probability of getting a 4 to the probability of getting a face card. So 4 plus 12 is equal to 16 and copy the same denominator, which is 52. So we have 16 over 52. We can still simplify it by dividing the numerator and denominator by 4. 16 divided by 4 is equal to 4 and 52 divided by 4 is 13. Therefore, the probability of getting a 4 or face card in a deck of cards is 4 over 13. After we discuss mutually exclusive events, let us talk about non-mutually exclusive events. Non-mutually exclusive events is completely different from mutually exclusive events because the union of two events have outcomes in common or the two events can happen at the same time. This is also referred as the joint events and can be illustrated using two overlapping circles where the overlapping region is the intersection of the two events. In non-mutually exclusive events, the probability that A or B occurs is equal to the probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of A and B. The probability of A and B is the intersection of the two events. Given for example, what is the probability of getting a diamond or face card in a deck of cards? The two events are event A getting a diamond, event B getting a face card. The possible outcomes of event A are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Jack, Queen, and King of Diamonds. So we have 13 possible outcomes for event A. However, the possible outcomes of event B are Jack, Queen, and King of Clubs, Jack, Queen, and King of Hearts, Jack, Queen, and King of Diamonds, Jack, Queen, and King of Spades. So we have 12 possible outcomes for event B. Notice that the two events have possible outcomes in common, and those are the Jack, Queen, and King of Diamonds. So, we can say that this is non-mutually exclusive event. Moreover, we can illustrate it using two overlapping circles. Now, to find the probability of getting a diamond or face card, we will find the probability of getting a diamond first. And that is 13 over 52. Since we have 13 diamonds in a deck of cards, so the numerator is 13 and the denominator is 52 because in a deck of cards, we have 52 cards. Then we will solve the probability of getting a face card. And that is 12 over 52. Since we have 12 face cards out of 52 cards. More so, since this is non-mutually exclusive events, we will consider also the probability of getting a diamond and face card. That is 3 over 52. Since we have 3 possible outcomes, and those are the Jack, Queen, and King of Diamonds. Hence, the probability of getting a diamond or face card is equal to the probability of getting a diamond, which is 13 over 52, plus the probability of getting a face card, which is 12 over 52, minus the probability of getting a diamond and face card, which is 3 over 52. 13 plus 12 minus 3 is equal to 22. Copy the same denominator, which is 52. We can still simplify 22 over 52 by dividing the numerator and denominator by 2. 22 divided by 2 is 11, 
52 divided by 2 is 26. Therefore, the probability of getting a diamond or face card in a deck of cards is equal to 11 over 26. Again, in a deck of cards, getting a 4 or getting a face card are mutually exclusive events because you cannot get a 4 at the same time a face card in a deck of cards if you are going to select a random card. However, getting a diamond or getting a face card are non-mutually exclusive events because you can select a diamond at the same time a face card if you're going to select a random card. And those are the Jack of Diamonds, the Queen of Diamonds, and the King of Diamonds. Are you ready for more examples? At this moment, let us consider a fair die. Sheldon rolled a fair die and wished to find the probability of the number that turns up is add or divisible by 5. To answer this, let us identify first the sample space. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Since those are the possible outcomes in rolling a die, the number of sample space is 6. Given event A, getting an add number, the possible outcomes are 1, 3, and 5. And event B, getting a number divisible by 5, the possible outcomes is only 5 because that is the only number divisible by 5 in the sample space. Now, can we consider this as mutually exclusive or non-mutually exclusive events? Correct! This is non-mutually exclusive events, since both A and B has something in common, and that is the intersection of A and B, which is 5. Now, let us count the cardinality in each event. For event A, we have 3. For event B, we have 1. And for an A intersection of B, we have also 1. Since this is non-mutually exclusive events, we can use the formula probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. To solve the probability of getting an add or divisible by 5, we will get the probability of A first, and that is 3 over 6. Since we have 3 number of outcomes over the total number of sample space, which is 6, plus the probability of getting a B, which is 1 over 6. Since we have 1 for the number of outcomes in event B, over the total number of sample space, which is 6, minus the probability of getting A and B, which is 1 over 6. Since we have 1 for the number of A intersection of B over the total number of sample space, which is 6. 3 plus 1 minus 1 is equal to 3. Copy the same denominator, which is 6. 3 over 6 is also equal to 1 half. Therefore, the probability of getting a number that turns up is add or divisible by 5 is 1 half. Let's have another example. What is the probability of getting an even number or number less than 2 after you roll a die? Again, the sample space in rolling a die is the set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, since those are the possible outcomes. The number of sample space is 6. Given event A, getting an even number, the possible outcomes are 2, 4, and 6. Event B, getting a number less than 2, the possible outcomes is only 1, because that is the only number less than 2 in the sample space. Now, can we consider this? as mutually exclusive or non-mutually exclusive event. Correct! This is mutually exclusive events, since both A and B have no outcomes in common. Hence, the intersection of A and B is an empty set.
Now, let us count the cardinality in each event. For event A, we have 3. For event B, we have 1. Since this is mutually exclusive events, we can use the formula probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus probability of B. To find the probability of A or B, first find the probability of getting an A, and that is 3 over 6, since we have 3 number of outcomes in event A over the total number of sample space, which is 6, plus the probability of getting a B, which is 1 over 6, since we have 1 possible outcomes over the total number of sample space, which is 6. 3 plus 1 is equal to 4, then copy the same denominator, which is 6. 4 over 6 is also equal to 2 over 3. Since 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. Therefore, the probability of getting an even number or number less than 2 after you roll a die is 2 thirds.